Were movies a, a part of your life growing up? Did you like going to the movies, watching movies, uh, any, any of that? Yes, it, it was, very much so. Uh, my father was a film buff, and he took me to the cinema when I was pretty young, trying to sneak into the PJ-30 <laughs> stuff when I was younger than that. And so, no, it, it was a major part. And, and Do you remember any favorites particularly? I, w I was a big fan of David Lynch, mm -hmm. like Twin Peaks and stuff like that. It was like the stuff yeah. that formed my life. Now, I have heard, I don't know if this is correct, but I've heard that you were a child actor. Is that That is correct. <laughs> How did you get into that side of, th of things? I was 10. <laughs> so I wouldn't say I was a child actor. I would say I was a child being. You know, yes. just, just do what you do. <laughs> just say what I say. Just repeat me. The parrot thing actor, I think I was. But it was uh, this TV series in Sweden when I was a kid. And how did that come about? It was, uh, well, uh, to be honest, the, the director was my uncle. Okay, that's fair <laughs> enough. But it was, a, it was a, yeah. And, and was, it, was it a positive? Did it make you want to, uh, more or less interested in being in this business? More. I, I was so young, so I, I, it, was, it has no comparison to what I'm doing now. But it, it maybe did, in a way, affect, it maybe it does affect stuff that happens really early. But it's, it's fun, you know, to... This is crazy, all the camera, I mean, all this, this the, the world of, of, of um, it's this kind of, you create a dream, yeah. you create a, a fantasy, and, and it's sometimes even better than the reality, you can, you can create stuff that is perfection, you can only find in art, is, is an expression, which is kind of true. Now, when did it first occur to you that you might try being on the other side of the camera? That's a good way. Why do you start doing what you do? It's very hard to say. You just start with something after high school, I guess, or after, after college. You just start doing something. Uh, and I went actually to a, a media college. Why? I have no, no clue. Most people, I don't think people know why you're doing what you do. They just do it. It's, it's inside themselves, I guess. And was there a moment, though, when you knew that it was the right thing to be pursuing, that you were, that you were good at this, that this was what you should be doing? Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, there wasn't. I still don't know if I, if I'm, you know, it's 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 fun and it's it's a, it's a lot of. It's never. It can't be boring. I mean, this profession. It, it, because if you're doing something boring, then you shouldn't do it. Because then everyone else is going to think it's boring. Right. It needs to be fun, and that's mm -hmm. the, one of the beauty thing, beautiful things about it. And so, uh, my understanding is your first. Uh, work was shorts, documentary shorts about musicians. Is that true, or is that not quite in order? No, that's true. I did like half an hour of shorts about like interview programs with with famous artists. For and this was for a TV program. This was for a, for a, a TV program in Sweden. Yeah, Swedish national t television. Is this because you were always into music, or was it just that happened to be what they needed? No, I think it was because I, I, I love music. I still think it's a, a, a higher art form in a way than, than movies. You know, a film you see once, maybe twice, a, a song will follow you forever. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a magic thing. And, and uh, I think that was the reason why I started out with So music. how did this idea of going from doing documentary shorts to doing a feature about a musician, a feature documentary about a musician, um, come about? Well, it was very organic, I would say. It wasn't like, I want to do a movie. Okay, what should it be about? It was really, I, I found a story that was supposed to be a seven-minute feature for Swedish television. And then I was like, what? This is a really good story, actually. It's not just a random story. I retold the story to friends, and, and they were like, well, this is the best story we ever heard. This is, this is like a fairy tale. It's, I never heard any story that is as similar to those kind of archetypical fairy tales as, as this one. So then the idea started to, well, maybe it could be half an hour TV thing, maybe it could be, wow, could it be one hour TV thing, could it be feature length, it, all this took a year, I would, I would say. And then, uh, and then it took four years, from the moment I started in 2008, it took four years to finish the film. So where did the information that this guy even existed, Rodriguez, where did that, how did that first come to your attention? In 2006, I quit my job and I went out backpacking I went out with a camera uh, for six months, traveling around Africa and South America, looking for stories and have a fun time too. I mean, it's so fun to yeah. travel. And in Cape Town in South Africa, I met Sugar, who is one of the characters. Yeah. And he told me this story. And, and I was like, this is, I never heard anything close to this in, in terms of the emotional content and the, and the 
the spectacular way things evolved. I, I always, I, my jaws just dropped, and and they're still kind of down here. It's yeah. a crazy story. Yeah. Did you know right off the bat that you would have Rodriguez's cooperation for the story, or did that come only later? You know, his involvement. No, I, I initially thought I would not get his involvement because I called his daughters, and they said, "Yeah, you can meet him, but you should not expect." anything because he doesn't do that, this kind of stuff. He doesn't like to be on camera. He especially doesn't like to be in a real documentary. I mean, that's, that's a big thing for him. And, and that was pretty much the, the first idea that to make the film without his participation. And I thought, that, well, fair enough, that could work as well. Then he would really be this the mystery, mystery that yeah. everyone talks about. So I wasn't really scared, but I, 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 I'm so happy that it turn out the way he does because it's so good to actually you know he's such a wonderful man you want to see him how did you and he first sort of make contact was it with sugar's help and or yeah sugar and his daughter's help yeah. I, I would say more than his, his daughter's help uh, well we met and, and he's you know he's 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 not a, like a, uh, this reclusive guy who doesn't like to talk he loves to just sit to chat about anything politics or right. or the the world but he doesn't like to speak about himself that was the problem and when you do an interview with someone you need them to have the ability to actually analyze themselves and think about themselves from the outside he doesn't do that he doesn't look at himself from the outside he has nothing to say and that's you know it's hard <laughs> to interview someone like that Part of the challenge, I guess, is figuring out how to structure it. The beginning is sort of more in the present and then going backwards and telling the story. It reminds me a little bit of Citizen Kane. You know, you have this, uh, you got the mystery man and now you want to find out uh, who he was. Actually, Citizen Kane was the reference that I, really? I was thinking about. It's a very smart, structured film. The, the, the section on the biography about a man is about a man who is trying to tell a yes. biography about a man. Right. Which is smart, and, and I was thinking to, to have that kind of structure, which is a little bit more, it's not really complex, but I'm telling the story from the, the, uh, the perspective of those two South African fans who are looking for, you know, Jimi Hendrix, they're looking for their dead superstar. He's as dead and as famous as Jimi Hendrix in South Africa. And I thought that their perspective is way more interesting than just tell the story, this is what happened, and yeah. then this and the, you know, this kind of biographical timeline. I did not want to do that. Mm -hmm. The story, another challenge, I, I guess, might have been the fact that he, Sugar Man, was sort of found now 15 years ago, not in 98, but, for, but that was within the South African community. For people here, they don't, realize, they don't necessarily even know that he's been found because they're still oblivious. Mm, well, it's not really true. The music guys, the yeah. guys who really knew music, they all knew Rodriguez. He, had, he was a cult artist yeah. in, in the whole world, I would say, before. But the general audience, I guess, would, didn't know about him too much. With a movie like this, is it a challenge to finance it? How, like, how did you approach the, the, the making of this? Well, it was, right. No, it was very hard. I actually didn't get... <laughs> any money for I got some money initially so we had money to make the first trip which was considered a, this is just a research trip mm -hmm. and then when the reproduction grant was going to come it didn't come so I actually only had the research trip and basically the film consists of the research trip the real filming trip I never did wow. yet <laughs> wow wow seems like you got a lot from your time in South Africa from the first research trip yeah, yeah. I did it was a one month research trip okay. it was a decent amount of time for your own musical taste was was Rodriguez the kind of thing that you would his music the kind of thing you would be into anyway it was I was very surprised because I don't really like those old guys too much but Rodriguez was different it's so accessible it's so hard not to like it because there's something in his voice that is so intimate it's so it's really it's emotional if you hear a song like Crucify Your Mind, for example. It's just, you know, the first time you hear it, you just, you know, almost get tears in your eyes because it's so, it's so rare that you have those kind of magic songs. And that's a magic song, I would say. If you could only listen to one Rodriguez song for the rest of your life, which would it, which would and it be? No, that would be the one, or a song called Course. These two songs are the ones that are okay. emotionally are hitting me the most. So you said it was three years uh, total on, on this film. Was a lot of that post-production, a lot of work in post-production? No, it was, uh, it was a thousand days of editing, basically. Oh my gosh. That was basically what the film was. I mean, there was one month of filming in the beginning, and then it was a thousand days of editing. And what were the, what, why did it go that long? 
Because, well, partly it was because of financing reasons. Yeah. I waited for that grant that never came, and I had to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And then I just continued working because I had nothing else to do. No one called me and asked me if I wanted to do a job. Yeah. If someone would have done that, I, I know the film would never have been done. <laughs> but no one called me, and I, I had no, nothing else like, to spend my time on. Wow. Um, and so with this film, you know, it seems like you've changed uh, a lot of people's lives. For people um, who maybe once loved Rodriguez and then wondered what happened, they have an answer. For Rodriguez, his life is now, I think because of the film, completely different. And for you, you're now Mr. Oscar nominee and many other great uh, accolades. So first of all, congratulations. Thank but you very much. Could you ever have imagined that it would have this sort of an impact on so many people? No, sir. I could <laughs> definitely not have imagined that. It's insane. I mean, it's insane. It was supposed to be a seven-minute piece for Swedish TV. Everything that happened after that, I considered a bonus. <laughs> and this is the most crazy thing ever. You know, I pinched my arm. What has been the highlight of the, of the process thus far? Maybe the first time when it, you know, it was screened in Sundance and it was like six standing ovations in a row. And that's what the first time we really understood this, this work. People and he was there it. too, right? And he was, that was the reason for those six standing yeah. ovations, I guess. Wow. <laughs> well, uh, and, and finally, uh, for people who fell in love with this film, and there are a lot of them, what's next for you? Do you have a plan yet? Yeah, I have two plans. Either I go travel again, looking for a story the same way I found this. It's a very pleasurable way of discovering the world and you explore. Yeah. Or I go with the, like, the, the best Hollywood offer, like, <laughs> do this, okay, let's do it. Or I, I, actually, I'm writing a script, a fiction script that could be that Hollywood so thing. So one of those, one of those, we'll we'll look for then, I guess. But yeah. Uh, we'll or I will become a like a, 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 a Hollywood casualty. No, well, we'll, we'll <laughs> I don't think we'll have to be searching for Malik. Searching It'll for be Malik, <laughs> his long hair. Right. Up and up. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you and congratulations. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye.